In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So, we're one week in to reading of the Psalms. You have your books. I trust you've been marking it up and making notations. Some of you may have multiple pen marks and you're highlighting it all over the place. Surely, right? (laughs) The Psalms are a treasure trove of rich and vivid language spanning a variety of emotions. They provide us with timeless imagery that speaks to our individual lives in profound and multifaceted ways. The versatility and adaptability of the Psalms allows us to discover personal significance and relevance regardless of his unique circumstances or life experiences. Martina, are we okay? You all right? For many of us, the practice of reading the Psalms in course is a new idea. And it's even more so when the assigned task is to read the 150 Psalms in 30 days. A request that I have heard is a bit daunting. So maybe I can help a bit to reduce your expressed anxiety. There's a church practice in biblical study of Lectio Divina that is looking at Scripture and taking time with it to read it, then to be quiet, to take note of a word or a phrase, and then to be still and to read it again. And maybe you might discover that that phrase is still there for you where another phrase comes up. And you still maintain that sense of quiet and you live with the reading. Now our focus is to read 150 psalms in 30 days. It's the the practice of the church. But I want to invite you to think about it in a little bit more of a subtle way. If in the midst of your paying attention to the psalms, And in this morning, you might have five psalms to read and you've read into your second psalm and it catches you and it holds you. And you're in a place that just can't let it go because it won't let you go. Then stay there with that. Live into that psalm. Find that that phrase that has become its hook, that thing that's going to carry you and live with you for the rest of the day. Don't worry about the other three that come along. And certainly don't try to catch them up at the end of the night, because if you do that, you're kind of like taking it as a sprint. Reading the Psalms is never intended to be a sprint-like nature where you're just kind of trying to catch your breath moment by moment by moment. No, I, I invite you to think about reading the Psalms as a, as a walk at dusk. A walk at dusk with a dear friend, a beloved, one with whom you walk until you can no longer see the light and you just turn back for the day. The Psalms will in, they'll focus us and we just pay attention to that single verse or even a part of the verse and it'll sum up the fuller meaning, meaning of the Psalm for you. And that's the moment. That's when you're walking the walk, holding it in the palm of your hands as God holds you in the palm of God's hand. Now, I can say that all day, but I'd like to give you an example of 
what it looks like. So for me, when I put into practice Psalm 116, and it's a song of thanksgiving that expresses gratitude for being rescued from a time of trouble, I found myself focused on the first part of verse 6, which reads, find rest for your souls. Now, Psalm 116 that we read this morning was only the first half of Psalm 116. It's a story of thanksgiving. But I'm not even going to focus on the whole of that. I'm going to focus on just that one verse. And not even just that one verse. I'm going to focus on half of the one verse. And in so doing, I hope it gives you permission to allow a psalm in whole or in part to speak to you in the coming days. Psalm 116, verse 6 is a powerful verse encouraging us to find rest and peace in the Lord. It reminds us that the Lord has treated us well and that we should turn to Him in comfort and solace, finding rest for our souls can be challenging in today's fast-paced world. We're often bogged down by the demands of work or family or personal responsibilities. We may feel overwhelmed, anxious, or burdened by life's challenges. Amidst all of this, Psalm 116, and that little part of verse 6, offers a beautiful reminder that we can find rest. Now, finding rest for our souls is not some new aged construct. The patristics taught the practice of searching for a profound spiritual peace and inner tranquility that can experience through a deep and meaningful connection with God. Embracing this habit means finding solace, contentment, and rejuvenation in the face of life's challenges and uncertainties through fostering a close and intimate relationship with the divine. And drawing from the rich theological and philosophical insights of our early Christian theologians and scholars, that is known as the church fathers, this prayer practice emphasizes the importance of contemplative prayer, meditation, and cultivation of faith ways as a path to experiencing rest for our souls. In the same way, it underscores the deep-seated belief that true inner rest and sanctification and satisfaction can be discovered through a harmonious and lasting connection with the divine presence. In St. Augustine's Confessions, the concept of finding rest for your souls is beautifully expressed through his contemplative reflections on his spiritual journey and the profound solace he discovers in his faith and relationship with God. His profoundly personal account probes into the restlessness in the human soul and the tranquility that comes from embracing the divine grace and aligning oneself with God's will. Similarly, in Origins on Prayer, the notion of finding rest is presented as a transformative power of prayer and the cultivation of a profound connection with the divine. Origins, he emphasizes a restorative and comforting nature of prayer as we seek inner peace and spiritual nourishment ultimately leading to the restfulness of the soul through the communion with God. Within early Christian thought, we find a myriad of profound insights into the spiritual principles and practices, of which these are but two. And they all suggest inner tranquility and peace through a deep and abiding faith in God.
Verse 6 speaks directly to my soul, urging me to turn to God for rest. It acknowledges the Lord has treated us well, reminds me of God's faithfulness, love, and provision in my life, and inviting me to find rest and peace daily. On the practical side, this rest involves surrendering my worries, my fears, and struggles to something bigger than myself. It requires me to trust in God's goodness and faithfulness, knowing that God cares for us deeply. When I turn to God in this way, I experience a profound sense of peace and contentment regardless of my current circumstances, that we are all loving and we are in protected hands. But this is not some passive act on our part. Turning towards rest in the soul, rest in the Lord, also means prioritizing my relationship with God. It involves setting aside time for prayer and meditation and a reflection on Scripture and prayers from the prayer book. Doing so allows us to find renewal and refreshment for our souls, allowing God's truth and love to restore and strengthen us. Finding rest in the Lord is not just about peace. It's about empowerment. It empowers us to face life challenges with confidence and resilience. And when we trust in God's goodness and provision, we can navigate difficult circumstances with a greater sense of peace and assurance. We can find comfort in knowing that the Lord is with us, sustaining us through these trials and difficulties. Over the coming weeks, we will endeavor to help you discover the vast range of emotions found through these psalms. We hope that you will discover a resource that you can turn to time and again, regardless of your state of mind. Think about it this way. This was shared with me earlier this week. The readings that we have throughout the day as we read our Gospels, as we read our Epistles, as we read our Old Testament, those are stories that we kind of look to. We kind of almost enter into a third-person account with them. We're, We're observers. We're once removed. But the Psalms, the Psalms are an invitation to go first person. God speaking to us and us speaking directly to God. That's this walk. That's what we are about. And as we seek ways to apply these psalms in our lives, I invite you to carve out time in your busy schedule to seek God's presence and draw strength from the Lord. Along the way, let's cultivate a spirit of gratitude for God's blessing and faithfulness in our regular movements. Let's also encourage others to find rest in the Lord, sharing the hope and the peace that comes from trusting in God. Psalm 116 is a beautiful invitation. An invitation that I so need to hear to slow down, be still, find rest in the Lord. And I might not be alone in this. It reminds me of goodness and faithfulness and encourages me to turn to something beyond ourselves for peace and comfort. as we embrace this and all the other psalms this week, 
may you experience a deep and lasting rest for your souls, knowing that the Lord has treated you, me, treated us well, and continues to watch over us with love and care.